Alright all, so what we're going to be doing today, something quick and easy, but still going to be awesome. It is a right-handed grafting knife. So the reason that you have knives that are right-handed and left-handed is because on a knife you have a bevel. So this knife edge bevels in from both directions. Now when you have a right and left-handed um, beveled, or a right and left-handed knife, so for my right handed, the bevel would actually be, let's see if I can draw this just right for you. Probably not. So it's gonna be straight. So I'm gonna put one bevel and that edge is gonna be running in this direction with a flat underneath, which is gonna allow when we're grafting right handed to push. If we were left handed and tried to push with this, it would dig in rather than slide through it. So today I'm going to be doing a right-handed one because I am right-handed. So my plan is here, I'm going to use these inner bearing races. I just have to get them spread out real quick. So let me get that done. All right, so we got my giant mallet and we've got the two bearings here. So now we're just going to get them mushed down. And voila! We've got it. We have our two little races. Obviously, you know, I didn't just do that. I actually did spread those out before and I just thought that'd be funny, so I did it. All right, so I'm gonna get the forge fired up. We'll get these thrown in, flattened out, and then we will begin our work into shaping it into that little knife edge. All right, let's get to it. All right, so what we're doing here is we're gonna take the outer race out of the forge, now that it's nice and warm, put it onto the flat of the anvil and strike it with the rounded side of our hammer to spread it out so that we get a nice flat surface to work with. All right, so we're gonna continue drawing out our stock here. Um, what we're doing right now is the front of the hardy hole is about four inches off the back of my anvil. So we were just seeing if we got the four inches flat out the front because that was our initial measurement that we were aiming to get to. So now our goal is to get all the material spread out and making sure where all the grooves and everything were at are nice and flat and they didn't mushroom over because the last thing we want is to create a cold shunt in our steel, which is basically a fold that has no connection in between of it. So now we go back into the fire and we get the steel back up to heat or back up to temperature so that we can pull it out and get to work again. So right here is a great example for why you have to use the right tongs for the job. These tongs were way too big and they weren't properly holding the stock, which is why the stock ended up flying out when I hit it, which is super dangerous because that metal was really, really hot. And the last thing you want is that touching you. But I figured I'd put it in slow motion so you could watch it fly through the air. Now I'm just gonna pretend like nothing happened and just Tap it with the flat side of my hammer just to get the edges straightened back out again. So now we're gonna go over two different methods of how to put the tip onto your knife. And the first method here is hammering it in. So I drive the material back at an angle and then I flatten it back out again and then drive it and then flatten it back out again. So the purpose of that is to begin to work 
the little nose into the front edge. Now I have to get everything cleaned off to make sure that we don't leave a whole bunch of marks everywhere and put it back in the forge to get heated up for its next um, smash that we're going to do to get that tip brought in. The next uh, process is we're going to use a chisel and attempt what is called a hot cut. So you just gradually work the chisel into the stock and try to get a nice cut working all the way through and then at the last minute before you go through and damage the face of your anvil you want to bend and break that little piece off. So now we're just going to go through and finish up the tip, tips. So we're going to make sure that uh, we get everything nice and flat and straight because the last thing you want is a knife that has a wave in it. Unlike our branches, we want branch, we want waves in our bonsai tree branches, but not in our knife blades because that would not be beneficial to any of us. So just making sure everything's nice flat. We're going to lay it out. Yeah, make sure you clean up the ample face. Let's see what we're doing here. Ah, yes, we're going to put it in so that we can now flatten the back. So front half is good. Now we're going to flatten out the back and get everything all straightened out from that point of view. So now we should be bringing back out our chisel or well, hot cut to finish up. We go for the break and the break does not happen. All the metal just twists up inside of the tongs. So now we're just going to flatten it back out and we're going to go over to the bench and take the easy way out. So we're going to use the angle grinder to end up cutting the tip into this one because I'm I don't want to spend too much more time trying to hot cut through it. Can I do it? Yes. Do I want to spend the time to do it? Not really. So I'm going to take the easy way here, use the angle grinder. So get it all plugged up. Make sure you grab the face shield. If I was doing long-term cutting, I'd actually put my respirator on, but I'm not. So I just put on my face shield to make sure I don't get any metal in my eyes. And then we begin to get a nice cut in at an angle. So I'll bring it over and give you a close up of it once we get this all cut out here. very important to make sure you put your tools away when you're done because a clean work environment is safe and as you can see my area is already a mess so I need to keep it as safe as possible here's your close-up back to spreading out the back ends so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the round edge of the hammer over the round horn of the anvil to make quicker work of this and get everything all spread out once we get that all cleaned up We'll put it onto the flat face of the anvil with the flat side of the hammer and flatten everything out nice and smooth. Then we'll put it back in the fire, get it heated back up. All right, so now that it's heated back up, we gotta pull it back out to straighten out the back edges again and make sure that everything sticks to right around a half inch wide is what we're going for. Um, so we're gonna Hit it, try to get it around that half inch, take the waves out, then we're going to lay it onto its side and strike it again to keep everything flat because when you hit it down, you can create a wave inside the stock that just, again, like I said earlier, not something we want in a knife, but great for bonsai. So now I'm putting a little curve into the knife so that it fits better into your hand. Don't worry, I didn't actually touch the metal. I was pretending so that I could see visually what my hand would look like if I was grabbing a hold of it. So that's what I was going for, to make sure I had the curve that I wanted for this little knife. So 
so this one is all finished up we're just going to set it down so that it can cool off over on the cement right here so i find it enjoyable when i go to shut the propane off in the forge so i wanted to share this experience with you keep an eye up at the top at the uh, venturi so where the orange tube is connecting in up at the top it it does this really cool little poof right as you release all the gas after you turn it off this step is by far the most important check your temperatures i did it in fahrenheit and celsius so you can see whatever temperature is easier for you but you want to check before you actually touch it with your bare hand because you will burn yourself so fast and i've done it so many times so please make sure you check the temperatures before you touch hot metal so now's the fun part here we got our respirator on putting on our shield because now we're going to be grinding on our little belt sander that i use um this is a heavy duty belt that's on there right now so right now we're rough sanding we're going to go around all the edges and just get all the forge scale cleaned off of it get it cleaned up make it look nice um this is also where we're going to final out the tip of the knife to make sure everything's at the exact angle that we want it and then we're going to begin to smooth out the edges we don't want to take off too much material though because we still have to go through the heat treat and if we get the edge too defined it can actually cause cracks and warps in that edge when we go to heat treat the knife itself so our goal here is just to do a rough cleanup and we can deal with the harder cleanup later All right, so let's drill some holes real quick and that way we can just get a cool look into the handle of the knife with the holes drilled through it. All right, so what happened here was, um, well, the blacksmiths will all know, my grain structure is huge inside here I must have underestimated what I was doing here. I thought 52100. I had to harden in an oil, but it hardened itself in the air. So that's something I got to re-research there. So I'll figure that out and put that down below right here, how 52100 actually hardens. That way maybe we can get a good answer on that one. But don't worry. I'm just going to take and round this over and I'm going to have a slightly shorter little edge on this one. And then the other one, oh no. Well, that's unfortunate. I misplaced my, oh, no, it's over here. So the other one will be the longer. So we'll have two right-handed. We'll have a little short guy and I'll have a longer one so that if we need like a bigger grip in here, we can get in there and we can get up in there like this. All right, so I'm going to run over, round this off. I'm not gonna bring you with me for that. Uh, the next time you'll see me is when we get back over to the forge over there. We're gonna heat these up and then let them cool down in the air. And then we're gonna heat them up and then we're gonna let them cool down in the air. So we're gonna do that three times. And what that's called is thermocycling. And the reason we do that is to avoid a giant grain structure like this so that it doesn't break. So, let's 
let's get this set up over there and I will see you at the forge. So now we take the stock that was warming beside the edge of the forge and put them in so that they can begin to get up the heat so we can start the thermocycling. So this is a long drawn out process that I'm going to try to make as quick and painless for you all as possible because I know you just want to see what the end result is anyway. So we'll just get through this here a little one step at a time. So here's a big thermocycle right here. We pull it out and we wave it through the air and you just wave it until the knife blank basically cools down below 500 degrees. So as we get to the end of our thermocycle cycles, <laughs> yeah, since we do it multiple times, as we get to the end of them, we want to go in and we actually want to clean off the extra forge scale that we can get off to get a nice smooth surface. So we're going to clean that off with a wire brush and just try to get the surface as smooth as possible and removing as much of that dirt and grime and um, everything else you pick up from inside the forge then even though it looks like it's cold down it still is actually well above 500 degrees so I'm just holding it out here and spinning it through the air waiting for it to cool I'll put my hand near it obviously I can't get a good read with my hand so I have to grab the uh, thermometer and once that tells me we're down around 500 degrees I will then move back into the forge and that's when we will go for our heat tree. All right, so here comes the fun stuff. We're gonna pull this extremely hot metal out of the forge and dip it into a tub full of canola oil. So I always aim to get the tip in first because we want that to cool the fastest. And then I drop everything straight down and into it and I'll move the knife up and down. I don't move side to side because I don't want the oil to put pressure and cause a warp in the blade. So I just move up and down. That way I get the type of movement I want and can get the air bubbles off of the steel so that it cools as quickly as possible, which is what will give you your hardness. All right, so now we're just going to clean up the tip of both of these knife blanks. So, well, I guess at this point they're hardened, so they're knives. So we're gonna clean up the tips of both of these knives so that we can temper them. So tempering is gonna take the stress out of the knife blade so that it is not excessively brittle and break whenever you go to use it. So now we're just going to heat up the back edge slowly here. So I focused back, this is the smaller blade right here, so I'm focused back further about where the multi-tool pliers are and I'm trying to begin the heat back there. I don't want to work it too close to the tip of the knife because that will overheat really fast. Now what I'm looking for is these colors that will come in and you'll see it and it's like a straw yellow to a light brown. then. I'm trying to remember all the colors in between and then eventually it goes blue if it goes blue you went way too far on the edge so the goal here was to get it to a straw on the edge which is right around where i have it at so my temper seems to be good all right so sorry i have my respirator on uh we're going to throw in this angle guide real quick and that's actually going to be what helps me hold my angle in on the uh uh, 
I put it in wrong. Give me one second here. Okay. So, now that it's in properly, what this is going to do is help me hold my angle as I'm coming through. And it's going to be consistent the whole time, just like that. So remember, the bevel is only going on this side. So I'm going to be holding like this and getting it to go through because when I'm cutting, I want that bevel running down like this. All right, let's get to uh, sharpening it up. All right, so now we're beginning to put the angle into the knife. That way we can get a nice sharp edge up at the front of it. So we we basically just sit here and since the edge only goes on one side, we just slowly work the tip in. Well, we work the edge in and just slowly get the bevel to increase more and more up the face of the knife. That way we get a nice, a nice bevel that runs through here. Uh, this is a super long process here and I sped up the video clips to make it run a little bit faster for you. So I'm just going to let you sit back and enjoy some music and I will see you at the end of the video.
All right, so I think I got you all set up now. So, this little guy right here, put a nice little edge on it. I have to go through and actually like hand file the edges and then hone them in yet. But it's got a nice little edge on it. And this one I kind of polished a little bit. So I'm probably just gonna leave this one as it is and not do anything with it. This one, I'm actually gonna blue and run from the back all the way to the front. That's why I kind of left that rougher texture. So, let me adjust my vise here so you can actually look into it as I'm doing this. All right. So I'm going to take and actually run the tip in here. So I've got between these two pieces of steel here and I don't have a super tight, but I have it tight enough that the steel is going to actually cool this down. So it might be a little bit noisy as I'm doing this here, but all we're going to do is just work our way up and down until we begin to get that nice blue texture in here. So you can see the water starting to seep out down through here. So really my goal is just start to fade that color and it's going to start and it goes from like a straw yellow to now it's moving into like a brown and now we're starting to fade into that blue color so now I'm just going to start to work my way down this way if you look right here where that's super dark that's a crack that is a crack that formed in it so that would be when I try to do a center punch to get ready to drill this one this one actually also cracked as well as the other one so I should be able to actually lift this up and it should fade its way down now. It's not, so we're just gonna have to bring it a little bit further ourselves. So we're bringing in this straw color down towards the base here, which is bringing the rest of the colors down and in. All right, so that's gonna be it for that one. This thing actually has some a lot of oil in it still, so we're just gonna take and wipe it down just a little bit. Just get that oil inside here. It's a little bit hot yet to get it to absorb the oil the way that I want it to, but that's okay. We'll let it run the soil. Uh oh, almost knocked down my extra tube stuff's over there. All right, so let's, good, good, good. So the color didn't go down there like I didn't like I didn't want it to. It stayed up. Um, ha! That was almost really bad. I went to grab my bottle of linseed oil and grabbed a bottle of acetone. Make sure you're never in a hurry whenever you're doing this kind of stuff. I wouldn't say I'm in a hurry. I would say my hands are really cold. But make sure you're not in a hurry. So now we're just gonna work this oil in here. That's all, just work the oil in. All right, so now we've got a nice little, a nice little color going into it. That then, as you work your way up towards the tip, there's not really any color there at all. So just something cool that I figured I would try on this one. Um, so with this other one right here, I actually have to be a lot more careful. So I wanna warm it up enough to get it to absorb the oil but I don't want to change the color on it. So I'm just gonna keep it in my hands here. And then, just bring it and rub it through the oil. Yeah, cause it's getting warm but it's not warm enough to change the color. So that's just where I want it at right now. So 
So now with it at that point, I'm just going to start bringing it through this oil. So it's hot enough I don't really want to hold it in my hand, but it's not hot enough that it's changing the color. Let's put it that way. So that's about it for it. I mean, we got this nice little look here. I might just see if I can pull this color a little bit more. This is playing a dangerous game now. Because that edge is way thinner. But we'll just stick it all down in the oil there. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, try to keep it interesting. So I am looking to try through this winter to make a lot more. Maybe I should let you see me. All right, so I'm looking through this winter to try and make more uh, different bonsai tools and stuff, but make more in like a bigger quantity that way. I can maybe start like a little Etsy store and start putting stuff for sale on there. Um, a lot of it's probably going to be the root picks. I mean, they look really simple, but once you get in and you start messing with the handles and getting everything shaped and locked into place and just trying to make everything fit just perfect, it's actually a lot more time consuming than what it seems to be. So I think I cut that down to, it was like a 10 or 14 minute video. But that was, oh, that was three days. Three, three days, not like hard work with those three days, but it was three days of work while still working a normal job, taking care of the family, all that fun stuff. So it was three days. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because that helps my channel out greatly. If you don't mind, sharing one of my videos that would be great because that also helps me out if you really enjoy my channel then you should subscribe to it because that also helps me out and if you like absolutely love it and just can't wait for my next episode to come out which i doubt any of you are like that but if you are like that hit the bell notification thank you